Today we're gonna to be talking about shortcuts. I don't know about you guys, but shortcuts in Final Cut Pro 10 helps reduce my editing time by a lot. Definitely something that I highly recommend that you guys look into, especially if you edit a lot like myself. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of my favorite preset shortcuts, some shortcuts that I made myself, and some other tips and tricks to help reduce your editing time. And if you wanna see more of these type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so that whenever I post a new video like this one, you'll be notified. So just before we get started, I just want to quickly thank Soundstripe for sponsoring this video. And if you guys are not too familiar with Soundstripe yet, they're basically a website that provides us creatives a huge selection of high quality music that we can use for any of our videos, whether it's for personal use, for your YouTube channel, or maybe even a client. I actually started using them way back then when I started shooting weddings. They just always had the type of music that I was looking for. It just made the whole music finding process a lot more enjoyable since they really organized their assets. Sets. So definitely check them out and see if you can find something that will fit any of your projects. And if you end up deciding to use them, make sure to use my promo code BRIANFRANCISCO20 so that you get 20% off any plan that you choose. So first let's start with some of my favorite shortcuts. These are shortcuts that I set manually in Final Cut Pro 10, since I use these tools almost all the time. So let's start with the retiming shortcuts. So when I create a cinematic edit, I like to change the speed a lot on certain clips. So say for example, I have a clip shot in 120 frames per second and want to slow it down to get that perfect slow motion speed. The long way would be to go into the retiming options tab and then select your speed or automatic speed to automatically set it. You'll usually find the best percentage to slow it down depending on your project's frame rate. Or you can just press one button like this. I know it's not that much work to click on the retiming options tab and then select automatic speed. I do this constantly throughout an edit so that extra two to three seconds that you're saving each time will definitely add up. So if you're gonna do this as well, I suggest you follow the next steps and set up your shortcuts. First thing you're gonna do is click on Final Cut Pro, commands, and then customize. Then you'll see a keyboard like this pop up. Type in automatic speed in the search bar then with it highlighted, press the desired key that you want to use and set it as. I suggest the number one, since I will be using this the most, I want to set it as my first button. It might ask you to create a new keyboard since the default one is locked by Final Cut. That's not a problem at all. Just create a new one and name it whatever you like. What I would do next is probably set up two, three, four, and five to the retiming option speeds that I use the most. So for number two, I'm going to assign Retime Reset. So this will set the clip back to normal. For number three, I'll set it as Retime Fast two times, four as Retime Fast four times, and the number five key as Retime Fast eight times. Again, adjust this depending on what you guys use the most. These are what works for me and helps me speed up my editing time. The next thing I want to manually set is trim start and the trim end shortcut. So let me use this as an example. Usually when I trim and edit my talking heads, I would usually place it on the timeline, then drag the beginning to shorten it and at the end as well to pick out the certain part in that clip that I want to use. Yeah, it doesn't take that much time, but again, a few seconds will add up if you're constantly doing this while you're editing. So with the trim start shortcut set, all I need to do is have the playhead at the part where I want it to trim. So say I want to cut it here. All I need to do is press the assigned key to cut there and then move to the end and press the other key to delete here. So this is a huge time saver for me for when I edit my tutorials as I'm constantly resizing and readjusting my clips. So to set this, open up the commands keyboard again, search for trim start. I set the left bracket button as the default for this one. Then search for trim end, and I will set the right bracket for this. So now I can easily trim and have it automatically delete what I don't need. The next shortcut I have is the volume adjust to zero. You guys might not use this as much, but I do quite often. I basically assign the number zero to automatically adjust any selected clips that I want to set as silent, so no audio. So to do this, you gotta search for set volume to silence, 
and then press the button you want it to set it as. So zero, but you can choose and select the button that you want to use for it. So there's some really good shortcut presets by Final Cut as well that I use quite often. So by pressing B on your keyboard, it brings up the blade tool. So I use this to cut up my clips. R brings up the range tool. This one is really, really useful. It lets you select a portion of your clip or audio and create adjustments for that selected part. So if I press R and select this portion of the clip, I can now either slow it down or speed it up, depending on what I need to do with it. And by doing that, you easily just created a speed ramp effect. And you can do this with audio too. You just gotta select the part that you wanna modify and then adjust the volume up or down. Now markers. So this is a great tool to use to mark down certain spots on your timeline. I usually leave a marker at points where I plan to use B-roll for that certain talking head. All you need to do is simply press M on your keyboard at the spot you wanna place a marker on. You can also leave notes if you double click it. So the next one's not really a shortcut. I like to place a custom generator on the timeline and stretch it out all the way before I start editing. Now, why do I do this? Simply because I don't really like the magnetic timeline where Final Cut automatically snaps your clips together when you place them in your timeline. So by having the generator there, it lets me place the clips on top of it and adjust things as I need to without it automatically snapping together. It might sound weird to you guys, but it helps me keep things in place and have it lined up as I need it. And my last tip of the day, saved presets. I actually just started doing this one recently. Basically, I save the color correction and grading that I did for one clip and save it as a preset in my effects tab so I can use it in future videos. I use this mostly to apply to my talking heads, like this one here. Since I film most of my talking heads the same, I usually apply the same corrections and LUTs to it. So to do this, I selected the clip I want to copy the settings for, then I click on Save Effects Preset right at the bottom here. It will bring up a window like this where you can choose which adjustments you want to save. So for this one, I just want to save the two custom LUTs that I applied to it. I named it and saved it in a new category called Primetime Presets. So now that every time I want to apply these colors to my next edit, I can just look for it in the effects tab and drag it on top of that clip. Now this probably won't work for everyone, so it's another thing that I'm trying to use more often to save even more time when it comes to editing. If you edit certain things that are usually shot the same, then this will definitely come in handy. Thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to check out Soundstripe for some really, really high quality music for your videos. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so that whenever I post a video like this one, you guys will be notified.